Welcome back to the Fast Forward Sailing YouTube channel. Let's have a look at what went down on day three of the Olympic sailing in Tokyo. In this video, we're gonna be recapping day three of the Olympic sailing in Tokyo. We're gonna be going over all the results, including the fin class of 49 and the 49er FX. And we're gonna have an in-depth look at the 49er FX class, the ones to watch and my predictions for the top three. I'm going to be adding timestamps to this video, so if you want to skip to the relevant section to you, you can do that by hovering your mouse over the red progress bar below this video and selecting the part that interests you. I'm not going to be showing any highlights of the action today. I tried to do that in my video yesterday and YouTube made me remove that section. So lesson learned, looks like you're going to have to pay to get a taste of any of the action uh, in this year's Olympics. So what went down on day three? Well, it was a breezy one and it was a disaster for many of the favourites going into this week. In the fin, reigning champion Giles Scott finished in ninth in both races. He'll be disappointed with that. Also joining him further down the fleet than he would like is Australia's Jake Lilly. And it was even more disappointing for another pre-regatta favourite in New Zealand's Josh Jr. He won the America's Cup earlier this year and he'll be very disappointed with this result. But let's have a look at the top three here. We have some familiar names, but I wouldn't have put money on Alec and Kanar being at the top of the fleet after the first day. Zombar Beret, she's a name we're familiar with being in that top three. He'll be one to watch for the rest of the regatta. Nicholas Heiner, a previous world champion, doing pretty well too. Now at this early stage, it's all to play for, so I expect we'll see quite a rotation in the results. But looks like these top three are threading some form together. 1-1 for the first place, 2-2 for the second place, 3-3 for the third place. So they've got not an insignificant buffer over the rest of the fleet at this early stage. Well, let's have a quick look at the 49er men results before we uh, have an in-depth look at the 49er effort class. Today, the first race got abandoned. Britain's Dylan Fletcher Scott and Stu Biffle won the start and were second at the first mark. However, GBR banged the right on one of the last beats and lost a lot. And so they'll be very thankful that the race got canned. In the rescheduled race one, New Zealand found themselves back in 18th place, struggling in dirty air after the start, but also worsened their loss by going right in the latter part of the first beat. Real upset for them. I don't think anyone was predicting them to be this far back at this stage, down in 12th. We've only had one race, so I'm sure they can climb back into it, but they'll be hoping not to make too many more mistakes. And as we know, Enoshima isn't a place where it's easy to be consistent. The Great British Boat ended up finishing in second, gain going left in the latter part of the first beat. In the first half of the beat, they being in the teens. Spain were performing well in the early part of the race, dropping back to fifth. They're one of the heavier crews, so they'll be ones to watch out for this week. They were second in the 2020 Worlds and are training partners to Burling and Chuk. The big surprise of this first race is the young Irish crew coming through on top. Great result for them. It will be interesting to see whether they can keep that up. Familiar names in Germany's Eric Heil and Simi Van Teller in third and fourth. Right, before we have an in-depth look at the 49er FX class, I'd like to get your thoughts on whether you're watching this year's Olympics. Much of the footage is behind that paywall, which we haven't seen before. You're having to pay for services like Eurosport and Discovery+. Plus. For those of you who have paid, have you liked the commentary? Have you liked the footage? I must say I've been fairly impressed with the commentary. I haven't stepped it up too much from previous games, but I must say I prefer the commentators to some of the commentators we see commentating on the CLGP. The interesting change this time around is that we now have mics on some of the crews so we can now hear what they're saying. Although most of it seems to be heavy breathing interspersed with the old swear words. Right, let's have a look at the 49 FX women results. Great day for Great Britain's Charlotte Dobson and Saskia Tidy with two bullets in the first two races, dropping back a bit in the third race, but great day for them, they'll be happy with that. Surprised to see USA so far up here, great first two races for them too, and Martine Grail, the gold medalist last time round, finds herself back in third, but I'd be surprised if she doesn't climb up further by the end of the week. Right, so a quick introduction to the 49er FX class, they have a high performance women's class in the Olympics, this is their second games, they replaced the match racing, which went on in 2012, they're asymmetric boats, so they have asymmetric spinnakers, which means they zigzag downwind uh, more so than other boats, just like you see on the America's Cup boats or the F-50s in Cell GP. They got the same hull as the 49er, but just a smaller rig and sail. Right, before I give you my predictions for the top three this week, I'm just going to run you through what happened in race one and two. 
Unfortunately, I couldn't find the coverage for race three. So if you did see that race, leave a comment below with your thoughts on what happened. So in race one, there was a good start for New Zealand, Brazil and the USA. There are lots of errors and cap sizes. So the most dramatic racing we've seen so far in this Olympics. New Zealand silver medalist Misha Maloney were first round the first mark. The eventual winners for Brits were a bit down the fleet, but they banged it out to the right side going downwind. They got the gust first and then continued gaining by going to the left on the second beat. GBR are one of the taller crews, uh, so that could see them advantage if these strong conditions continue. I believe the wind was dying through the day, so that could be why we saw them uh, drop back to sixth in the third race. The conditions were very shifty and gusty, so if you had the right strategy, you could climb back up the fleet. There was a lot of trouble for the boat rounding the first gate mark, some of them were struggling to get the spinnaker in, and the New Zealanders, Maloney and Meech, who were leading at Mark 1, put the boat in and dropped a lot of places. Japan were up there too in the first race, potentially with a home advantage. The latter part of the race was led by Brazil and GBR, with GBR leading round the last windward mark. Brazil tried a jive set, but that created problems with their spinnaker, which persisted for the rest of their race, and they dropped 13 places on a painful last downwind. So that's just a lesson for us sailors there. They didn't have to do a drive set. They could have been conservative and just been happy with second. Especially at this early stage in the regatta. Sometimes those seconds are pretty much as valuable as first places. So first place went to Charlotte Dobson and Saskia Tidy. Second to Tamara Atchigoyen and Paula Martin. And third to the USA's Stephanie Robel and Margaret Shea. It was a disastrous race for two of the pre-regatta favourites in Brazil and New Zealand. It shows even the best of us make mistakes. And it was the Brits who were the more conservative of the boats. You could see that in their manoeuvres and sometimes overlaying the ley lines a little. You can do that, especially in these high performance boats, because if you do overlay the ley lines, you can just bear down a bit and that extra speed advantage makes up for some of that extra distance sailed. Right, race two now, another disaster for the New Zealand boat, Maloney and Meech. They were a silver medalist last time in Rio were just a bit over the line at the start. They did end up completing the race and finished in a commanding first, only to find they didn't get a beep as they crossed the finish line. Great Britain won this one. They didn't have a great first beat, but they managed to catch up. They seemed to be taking the shifts better. GBR rounded the first mark in fourth. USA, New Zealand and Spain in the top three spots. Disaster for Japan as they capsized at the first mark. It looked like they were just a bit too slow in their bear away. These are high performance boats and you can really see even these top sailors sometimes struggle with them. Brazil also not having a good race way back in the fleet at this early stage. Another capsize, Spain put it in while they were in second position. Then more drama at the first lowered gate. Germany and Norway got stuck together. Norway obviously thought they were in the wrong because they appeared to do their turns. It looks like especially in these strong winds it's all about minimising those mistakes because they are so costly. So the USA led most of the way round. Uh, Brazil managed to catch up through the fleet, showing their class. There was a few dunkings of another half of the race with Australia and the USA dunking their crew in but quickly recovering. I guess that's a problem when you're all the way trapezed out and then the wind just drops off. So New Zealand finished first but were disqualified. So that left first place to Britain's Charlotte Dobson and the USA finished up in second. Right, so now I'm going to give you my predictions for the ones to watch this week. It wouldn't have meant much me doing this a few days ago because there had been such a long hiatus in racing uh, for the 49er FX class as well as the other classes but particularly the 49er FX with very few events in the last 18 months. So these first three races are probably the best indicator we have of who's performing and who's not. Here's a quick look at the results from 2016. I find the previous Olympic results are often a helpful indicator as they show who can perform at this high level. However, being such a new class, 2016 was the 49FX's first Olympics, so arguably the results from last time round weren't that telling, because sailors who weren't quite so used to it in that first Olympics have now had a chance to close that gap on the top boats in the world. So in first, we had Brazil's Martin Grail and Kahina Kunz. In second, Maloney and Meech. And in third, Denmark's Jena Mai Hansen and Katja Salskov Ervesen. Hopefully that's how you pronounce it. Uh, Tamara Echegoyen narrowly missing out on that bronze medal. Of particular interest is the medal race. So it's the most important race of a regatta. Only the top 10 qualify for it. And it's interesting to have a look at who can perform in those medal races. Because if you can keep it together psychologically in that last race, you have a good chance of winning those medals. So Brazilians winning that one, so they'll certainly be ones to watch, I believe, this week. 
New Zealanders finishing up in second in that race. It shows fourth, but that's because it's a double point race. And the Italians finishing up third in that race. I'm not sure whether the Italians are here this year. Let's have a look. Yeah, so no sign of the Italian boats this time round. They must have not qualified their country. If anyone has any insight on that, let me know. Interestingly, Charlotte Dobson, sailing with a different crew in 2016, didn't have a very good medal race coming in in last. So that's a bit worrying if we're expecting her to win that gold medal. The Netherlands are doing all right. They're two times world champions. They didn't have such a great first race, but have been progressively improving. Belgium doing pretty well too. That's a bit of a surprise. I don't remember seeing them in the top 10 too much. Denmark doing well, but Meloni and Meech, after winning this race where they got disqualified and winning this race where they capsized, they find themselves really far back, but they did manage to pull off a fifth place in the third race, which shows their psychological strength uh, to be able to come back from that. They were silver medalists in Rio, and I expect to see them climbing their way up the fleet. It's early stages for them. Hopefully they've used up their bad luck. Interestingly, Maloney's brother narrowly missed out on the Finn selection for the Games this year. He won the Gold Cup ahead of his countryman, Josh Jr. But because the Olympic trials is based over several events, Josh Jr. was selected. The selectors may be regretting that decision a little bit now because uh, he didn't have such a good day today. Molly Meach also has a sibling in the form of the laser classes, Sam Meach, who's underperforming so far in this regatta. The USA are the surprise of the day for me. I didn't expect to see them up there. They were match racing world champions, so perhaps they're taking advantage of these shorter legs, which causes the fleet to come together more often, creating more tactical situations. Not such a good race in the last one today, so they'll be hoping not to have too many more high results. But it'll be interesting to see how they do tomorrow and whether they can continue this form. So here are my predictions for the top three this week. I'll probably be wrong, but here goes. I'm going to put previous gold medalists, uh, Martin Grail and Kina Kunz, in first position they were doing really well in this race until the problem with their spinnaker so if they had pulled off a second they'd be extremely close to the top and they've also shown that ability to win in these high pressure situations such as a medal race they do seem to have this almost invincibility about them in that even if they're a bit far back in the fleet they just consistently gain and climb their way up as they did in this second race of interest, you may have recognised uh, the last name of the Brazilian helm, Grail. She is the daughter of Brazilian gold medalist and Brazil sailing legend, Torben Grail. So the Brazilian boat, I'm going to put in first. The Brits do look really strong and have shown their ability to climb up through the results. Uh, so I'm going to put them in second. I think they've improved from the 2016 games, but I'm still not quite sure they've got that winning edge. Third place is a bit all up for grabs. I'd be hesitant about putting any of these boats in that third spot just because I'm not used to them being up there. Of course they could be, we've had a long hiatus in the 49er FX class so I'm sure there'll be a few surprises. If Maloney and Meech can pull off a solid day tomorrow, I believe they're in for a shot at third. If they don't make it though, I think I'm going to put the USA in that third spot. So there you go, that's my predictions. Let me know yours in the comments below. So I'm going to leave the video there. I hope to do a video on the 49er men's class or the fin class tomorrow. I'll be doing these type of videos throughout the week. So if you want a recap of what went down after watching the action, or if you just want a quick catch up of what's happening and you don't want to pay for all these subscription services, then subscribe to the channel. Uh, press the notifications bell. That's important uh, because just because you're subscribed doesn't mean you'll get uh, the notifications. Uh, so you may end up missing a video. So with that said, I'll see you tomorrow.